Lesson number one for violin. No matter what kind of case you have, you're going to want to try to open it so that the top is up. With the soft cases, there's a pocket on the top, and with the hard cases, it's a little bit rounded. So you want the flat part of your case to be on the ground. Uh, undo zippers, latches, whatever you have. And then on the inside, you should have your instrument, a shoulder pad, and rosin, which is for your bow and then your actual bow. But let's not get the bow out for the first lesson. We'll save that for the second lesson. <clears throat> so, with your shoulder pad, there's an arrow drawing down, and there's a button, I call it the button, down on the bottom. You'd like to have the arrow pointing down to the little button on the bottom. Or you could just look at it and make sure that when you're looking at your violin, the thick side is on the left, and the skinny side is on the right. So, all right, the violin has four strings. What do you notice about the sound of the largest string compared to the skinniest string? This is the largest, and this is the skinniest. I hope you notice that the larger string actually sounds lower and the skinny string sounds a lot higher. And we know that from music class, the larger an instrument is, the lower it will sound, and the higher an instrument is, the higher it will sound. So it would make, it would make sense that this thicker string would sound lower, and the tiny string would sound higher. Uh, the other thing that we may notice is that the uh, strings are all the same length. They go from here down to here. But we could add fingers to change the length of the string. So take a second and think, what do you think will happen if, say, I put my finger here and I pluck the string rather than when the string is its full length? So if I shorten the string, do we think the sound is gonna be higher or lower? Let's find out. Here's with no fingers. Here's when I add a finger. So as you add fingers and you shorten the string, the sound goes higher. So let's learn what our strings are called. We have G, D, A, and E. I like to remember with good, dogs, always, eat. And then we think the first letter of each of those words. So G for good, D for dogs, A for always, and E for eat. All right, now that we know our strings, let's learn how to hold the instrument. You're gonna to wanna to be at the edge of your chair with your feet flat on the floor, sitting as tall as you possibly can. And then we're gonna take our violin and put it up on our left shoulder. The next thing you wanna do, you situate your shoulder pad until it feels nice and comfortable and very carefully begin to let go to see if you can hold it without any hands. If you're able to hold it without any hands, you found probably a pretty good way to hold your instrument. And nothing should change when we go to put up our hand. So we're just gonna take our hand and we're gonna make this nice little curved shape and put our thumb and our pointer finger right towards the end of the fingerboard. That's that black piece of wood you see here. Now my hand isn't holding up the instrument, it's just resting there. So let's take our right hand, take our thumb, and we're gonna plant it right here on the edge of this fingerboard. And we're gonna pluck from the thickest to the skinniest string. Here we go. This time let's see if you can say the letter of each string while you're plucking it. Remember, good dogs always eat. Here we go. G. D, A, E. So we were talking about shortening our strings to make the sounds higher. Let's pretend that we're on the D string. So that's your second string, good dogs. Give it a couple plucks, make sure you're getting the same sound as me. And then we're going to take our pointer finger and we're going to set it on the very first string, or I'm sorry, not the first string, the very first tape. So that would be the one that's furthest away from your nose. And we're gonna try that note. Mm. If you're not
you're not getting a really nice plucking sound, if you're getting this sound, you're probably not pushing the string down the whole way. So make sure that with this pointer finger, you push that string the whole way down. Okay, let's give it a try. It should sound like this. Awesome. So remember, that sound got higher or lower? It did get higher. So let's pretend that this is Do. Open D is Do. Can you figure out what this note is going to be? Do, Lu, up a step. I hope you said Re. So we have Do and Re. I wonder if you can figure out a way that you could make it sound like me. Do, Re, Mi. It's still getting higher. Think about what you need to do. Hopefully, you figured out you could put your second finger down. So then we have Do, Re, and Mi. Let's pluck that together. Ready, and here we go. Do, Re, Mi. Again, if you're, in, if you're getting any of these sounds, it's because you're not pushing your finger the whole way down. That, that string has to be pushed all the way against the fingerboard to allow that string to vibrate. Awesome. So we have me, re, and do. Can you think of any songs from music class that use the sounds me, re, and do? I can think of one. Hot cross buns. Let's sing it together. Feel free to use your hand signs. Here we go. Me, re, do. Me, re, do. Do, 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 do. Re, re. Do you remember how many fingers we were using to get the sound me? We were using two. So if we start on two fingers, let's see if we can figure out how to play. Me, re, do. Take a second to figure that out. Me, re, do. All right, so we're gonna play me, re, do together. Here we go. Me, re, that same phrase happens again because our form for hot cross buns is mi re do a mi re do a do 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 re 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 that's our b phrase and then phrase four mi re do so we'll get to play mi re do for phrases one two and for phrase four ready and here we go mi re I'll play this next phrase. Do, 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 re, 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 re. Your turn. Mi, re, do. All right, so you take the A phrases, and I'll take the B phrases, or the B phrase. Here you play. Mi, re, do. Mi, re, do. My turn. Do, do. Awesome. Let's switch. I'll play the A phrases. You get ready for the D or for the B phrase that starts on the D string for do 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 do, and then figure out of where you're gonna put your finger to make re. Here I go. Mi re do. Mi re do. Your turn. Do 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 do. Re 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 re. Mi re do. I bet we can play the entire thing together now. So we'll just play the whole thing, uh, all phrase, all four phrases, sitting nice and tall with good posture. And make sure you're still able to hold that instrument without any hands. If you're not able to, you may have started to make a shelf for your violin to rest on, and we don't want to do that. You want to keep this wrist nice and relaxed. Ready, two fingers on your second string, play. Me, re, do. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed lesson number one. Um, oh, before I forget, 
you can actually play that hot cross buns on every single string. So you can try and see what it sounds like on the other strings. For example, on your skinny string, good dogs always eat. This is going to start on the E string. Quite a bit higher. Or you can try it on your lowest string, on G, the thickest one. Make sure whenever you're playing those songs, whichever string you're on, be sure to push the string the whole way down with your fingers so that you get a beautiful ringing sound. If you get a dud, oh, that was hitting my tape a little bit, if you get this sound, you'll know how to fix it. Alright, can't wait to see you at your next lesson. See ya!